Attaining a weight of up to 500 pounds, the sambar is the largest deer species of India. The sambar seems to be the preferred species that tigers like to hunt. This is probably due to its large size, thus providing a good meal for the tigers, and the fact that it occurs solitarily or in small groups, thus having less eyes and ears to detect a tiger that is about to attack. Although the mugger crocodile can attain a length of 15 feet or more, this particular individual, guarding her nest, was about 6 feet long. Is that a baby on her right side? The babies were no doubt hatching out at this time from the eggs beneath her, and she was assisting this process by digging down to the eggs. As with other deer species, only the males have antlers. Here we see a female sambar. She remains very alert to detect any danger that might be present, such as in the form of a tiger or a leopard. And here we see a young Royal Bengal tiger. This is a cub, huh? This cub was part of a family of about four, the mother and its two siblings. Where are the other three? We do not see them here, but they were close by. A small troop of Hanuman langurs enjoying an early morning drink of water. They are also ever alert. Tigers and leopards will not waste an opportunity to kill Hanuman langur monkeys. Indeed, these monkeys will be up in the trees announcing the arrival of either a leopard or a tiger. The predators do not take kindly to this announcement, for indeed they like to go about the forest undetected. And here we see why prey species throughout this park need to remain ever vigilant. The tigress seen here is well hidden in the forest, and she could pounce out at any unsuspecting prey species that may happen along. See, we see the face here now. The tigress is very well hidden here. I sure hope so. Yes. This large owl species, the brown fish owl, was observed near a small creek. As its name suggests, mm -hmm. the fish owl is an efficient angler swooping down on waterways to pluck fish out from the water. Oh. 
An Indian monitor lizard is seen enjoying the warm sun as it sits atop a tree branch. A cold-blooded organism, the monitor lizard, like other reptiles, will use the heat that it absorbs from the sun to assist its digestion, thus increasing the rate at which nutrients can be absorbed from food that it has eaten. These jungle bush quail, always pecking about for food, only attain an adult length of about six and a half inches. Returning now to our mugger crocodile mother, we see that she continues to guard her nest. There are only two packs of Indian wild dogs, or dole, that occur in Taruba National Park. Here we see two members of a pack of six that are crossing the road. The Hanuman Langors are seen in the background watching this. And of course, Taruba National Park is very famous for its population of royal Bengal tigers. Here we see the tigress P2 as she has come to be known in this park. ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっと、ちょっと。ちょっ
चल देखा ना मैं एक ही देखा मैं अच्छा का बंटी भाई मैं भेड़ ने वो रिकार्ड है कि भेड़ ने वो तो बोला था A couple of weeks after obtaining this footage, this tigress, P2, gave birth to several cubs. We can see here that she's pregnant. A small family of sambar deer makes its way through the forest. Again, like other prey species residing in this park, they must remain ever aware of the potential danger to be had from tigers, leopards, or a pack of wild dogs. Returning now to our brown fish owl, we see that it has moved up into the trees. It is hyperventilating to keep itself cool in the heat of the afternoon. And the mother mugger crocodile enters the water. We consider that she might have young in her mouth that she's transporting from the nest to the water. Crocodiles will often do this. We did not, however, observe any baby crocodiles coming out of her mouth when she entered the water. Wattled lapwing is a common bird species seen in wildlife parks of India. Mm -hmm. 
Look, look. Here we see a rather large gathering of sambar deer. Again, note how they remain ever alert for any danger that might be around them. The ruddy mongoose, attaining a length of about two and a half feet, is the largest mongoose species mongoose. of India. Like other mongoose species, the ruddy mongoose has been known to attack and kill even cobras. Seen in the distance here, is the gore or Indian bison. This large species attaining weights up to 3,000 pounds is actually a member of the bovidae, the family including the cows. Nonetheless, it is often referred to as the Indian bison, even though it is not closely related to the bison of America or Europe. These are lean muscular animals and are very dangerous for tigers to attack. Nonetheless, tigers do occasionally kill them. Gore can use their horns to protect themselves Sometimes tigers get killed when they try to take down a gore. Another commonly seen and beautiful bird species of India, the Indian roller. The cheetah or spotted deer is the most abundant deer species of Tadoba National Park. When a tiger is detected, they will cry out their warning calls, which are often picked up and repeated by the Hanuman Langur monkeys up in the trees. A very rare sighting indeed. The Indian wild dog, or dole. Here we see a group of six of them that have taken down earlier this morning an adult sambar. Hunting as a pack, the Indian wild dogs are extremely efficient predators. The species has even been known to kill an adult male Bengal tiger. In one such incident recorded in the mid 20th century, some 25 Indian wild dogs were observed to kill an adult male Bengal tiger. They did this by some of the members of the pack keeping the tiger preoccupied while other individuals snuck in from behind the tiger and took bites in its posterior sections. Eventually, 
blood loss led to the tiger dying. It should be mentioned, however, that eight of the wild dogs were killed in this undertaking. The tiger did not go down without a fight. It did not go down easily. Now a question that often comes up with regard to the Indian wild dogs and for that matter the African wild dogs as well is are these animals simply domestic dogs that have become wild? And the answer to that is an emphatic no. Indeed, some four million years separate the speciation of the lineage that led to the wolf, Canis lupus, and therefore the domestic dog, which is a derivative of Canis lupus, and the Indian wild dogs, the dog. So these are very separate species. In addition, the African wild dogs are separate species from both the wolf, Canis lupus, and the Indian wild dog.
Although nobody in recent memory has seen the wild dogs kill a tiger in Taroba Park, they have observed tigers killing an occasional dole or Indian wild dog in this park. Indeed, tigers do not like competition from other predators and they will take whatever opportunity they can to eliminate those other predators from the environment. Here we see one of the Indian wild dogs getting a prize, namely the gastrointestinal tract, including the stomach from the sambar. I have observed this same type of thing going on with African wild dogs. That is, one individual out of a pack of 14 that had just killed an antelope was seen to rip the gastrointestinal tract including the stomach from the innards of the animal and then run off with it.